Okay. Welcome everybody. Uh, thank nice you very welcome. much again. And, and thank you very uh, much. Oh, okay, sorry, Javier. <laughs> Uh, on behalf of the Brazilian Logic Society and of the Logic Interest Group of the Brazilian Computer Society, it's a pleasure to introduce Professor Javier Legris, who kindly accepted our invitation. Javier, thank you very much for accepting the invitation to give this talk. Thank you, Bruno, for the introduction. And uh, well, I am really glad again. I would say it uh, to be here in online. Uh, the distance um, with you with it, the, through this seminar uh, logicos in quarantena i find it a very nice idea uh, in order to get in touch in this situation uh, when we, we it's not possible to travel from a country to another um, well thank you all and well thank you the people from from the from there in Rio, and as I told you, uh, I am very glad to to have an uh, so interesting and nice audience uh, from uh, constituted by friends and and colleagues from from different um, places, from many places. Okay. Uh, I will uh, talk about uh, some recent uh, research that I made concerning uh, the Peirce, Charles Sanders Peirce uh, existential graphs, and especially concerning identity and quantification. Please, uh, Bruno, if you we could uh, go on to the to the abstract. Well, in this paper, uh, I want to examine the diagrammatic expression of the notions of identity and quantification in the beta graphs, uh, the so-called beta graphs by Peirce, uh, belonging to his um, existential graphs, his diagrammatic system for uh, first order logic, uh, stressing its notational features in order to see it as a problem in what Peirce called uh, philosophy of notation and put it in the context of his theory of science or semiotics. That's very important. Uh, all this, this stuff is, um, all this stuff is in related to his semiotics. It will be plain now that first attempt to, by the beta graphs, was to make an analysis of identity and quantification in the special sense of uniqueness of the composition. Hence, the case of identity exemplifies the analytic feature of diagrams beyond their operational and structural feature. I will, um, uh, I will take into account especially this idea, this purpose, this aim by Peirce of doing some uh, kind of analysis um special kind of analysis uh, of these notions uh, identity and quantification uh, i should um, tell you a caveat first of all due to my interest in identity and quantification in this talk and in the analytic features of first grammatical notation i will not go into very interesting details into very important logical aspects of first beta graphs, like the presentation of the position the, of uh, the expression of multiple quantification, multiple quantification, as it is in the logical structure of sentence, like, for instance, uh, an example from Perth himself, everybody loves some benefactor when we are uh, in which two quantifiers are needed. Or the expression of pernex normal forms. I will not uh, devote it to this uh, in aspect because in, in this system is especially uh, are especially uh, convenient uh, to present the pernex normal forms. Uh, both um, are very fruitful achievements of the beta graphs, but I will not take into them into account. Uh, 
Um, besides, the presentation will try to offer some evidence for the fact, uh, for the following fact. Even the even if the beta graph can be shown equivalent to classic first order logic, I, I repeat, the beta graph can be uh, made equivalent to classic first order logic. First, notions of identity and quantification could not be the standard notion as we understand them. Um, moreover, Peirce's Peirce ideas about both notions depend on his philosophical background, his philosophical and moral um, and ontological presupposition, for instance, his uh, Synechism, and uh, well, it, uh, it could be um, so to say. It could be interesting to see uh, this special um, uh, kind of of um, interpretation of identity of conception of identity and uh, quantification of all identity. Well, uh, the next one. But it will be based, uh, Bruno. If you can see, then yeah, yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, what what uh, what time I have in in uh, up to now, Bruno? What time do I have? It's, it's up to you. Of the talk? It's up to you. Sorry. It's up to you. Ah yes yes. yes. Uh, uh, we have until uh, eighteen. Well, it's up to you. We have no, no time limit, in fact. The, well, we'll ah, okay, to okay, okay, an hour. okay, okay, okay. No, no, but I wanted to know. No, no, I, I, I think about one hour or something okay, like that. Okay, perfect. Because I, uh, we, we missed some time with, with the preparation. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have here the, the, the roadmap of the general organization of my talk. Um, we have a first, uh, first of all, I will present the grammatical idea of the grammatical reasoning in Perse in general. Uh, secondly, I will uh, go on into a short presentation of the idea of the citation graphs, the, the grammatic presentation. Um, third, I will uh, devote it to, the, um, uh, to understand the alpha system, so the system from propositional logic. Then I will go on with beta and the special um, um, subject of my talk, the lines of identity. Uh, in fifth, I will go on in this uh, analytical nature of the existential graphs, and and we, we will see how it, it functions. The, this uh, conception of this presentation of the line of identity, this expression. Uh, the aromatic expression of uh, identity. And then we will go on making some comments, some discussion, and some open problems that we have above all concerning the interpretation of uh, of Peirce's um, of Peirce, uh, proposal, of, of Peirce's achievements. Um, note that, uh, yes, we can go on for, uh, with the following slide, we have here a picture of uh, of Peirce in his uh, mature time uh, at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, it was this time when he uh, conceived and developed his existential graphs. He uh, went, so to say, from the algebra of logic to diagrams. This was the, the path he followed. Uh, we know very well that um, Peirce was one of the founders, fathers, one of the uh, initiators of uh, symbolic logic, and uh, one who contributed essentially to the achievement to, uh, of what we now call predicate logic, or moreover, uh, first order logic with identity. Uh, this system, we can uh, find it uh, in uh, full develop in the 30s from the last century, but uh, we have, we have uh, 
special. We have uh, very important ideas about it in 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 Perth, uh, of course, also in Frege, and um, Perth ideas come from this his algebraic uh, framework, um, and was later developed by Ernst Schroeder and at the verge of the uh, ninth, at the end of the 19th century, um, the turn of the century, in fact, um, at the beginning also of the 20th century. And uh, well, uh, from, from this moment on, with later with Principia Mathematica and, and the developments uh, by Hilbert uh, in Hilbert's program, well, we uh, finally had, have. Um, what we now call first order logic. Uh, but again, um, Peirce began his work in logic in the tradition of the algebra of logic, um, stemming originally from George Bull, uh, and also with the contribution of Augustus de Morgan related to relative logic. So. Uh, Bull's um, contributions and uh, the Morgan's relative logic were the two main uh, bases for his uh, own proposals, for his own work in um, algebra logic. We know that, uh, well, he introduced a special, um, uh, he made important um, Progresses, achievements uh, related to algebra of logic introduced a special symbol, the claw foot, as a basic algebraic notion in order to uh, change the idea uh, um, that um, um, the sentences in, in uh, the sentences in algebra of logic should be equations. He changed it to uh, semi equations uh, by means of the Crawford. And uh, he arrived around 1885 at an algebraic formulation of classical predicate logic. Uh, okay. Um, but, however, due to philosophical uh, reasons, he uh, became dissatisfied with the algebraic notation and he started developing at the end of the 19th century. From 1893 on until his death, uh, a diagrammatic system for logic that he, uh, it was called by him existential graphs. Uh, well, we can go on with the next slide. Bruno, we can go on. It, it, uh, it would be nice to go on with the next slide, if it's possible. Thank you. Thank you, Bruno. Well, I go to the first uh, part of my talk. Uh, OK, nice, nice. Uh, from algebra to diagrams. Well, in in a quotation, in I quote Peirce from a, uh, a work concerning uh, diagrammatic reasoning. Diagrammatic reasoning. Uh, much of the uh, of this work is in, or an interesting part of this work is in volume uh, four of the collected paper, papers. And he said that this. Is the purpose for which my logical algebras were designed, but which, in my opinion, they do not sufficiently fulfill. The present system of existential graphs is far more perfect in this respect, far more perfect in this respect, and has already taught me very much about mathematical reasoning. So he found a more accurate. Um, development or presentation of uh, of logic and a mathematical presentation of logic by means of a diagrammatic logical notation. Um, 
Yes, thank you, uh, Bruno. We can go on with, with this uh, quotation. This is a very important quotation in the paper um, concerning algebra of logic from 1885. And here, it's a very important, there is a very important point, but uh, uh, as far as he says, that all deductive reasoning involves an element of observation, namely, deduction consists in constructing an icon or diagram. So deduction is diagrammatic in, in first uh, conception. And he go on saying, um, that we should experiment upon this, uh, upon this icon in the imagination and observe the results so to discover and notice and hidden relations among the parts. It's a very important quotation that is already in his in one of his, his uh, algebraic papers. And uh, we can find that uh, at that time, he already had the idea of a grammatic presentation of uh, logic. And the reason was that um, reasoning and mathematics in general was for him, um, or have for him, a dramatic nature. We can go on uh, with the next uh, slide. Uh, well, it's the same. So he uh, stressed that um, grammatic reasoning was equivalent to valid necessary reason. So every uh, reason, deductive reason, was diagrammatic. And the next slide, please. Yes, exact logic. Um, that's very important. He wanted to do mathematic logic, what he called exact logic. And um, I want to stress in this quotation that um, he, um, he conceived a deducting of, of establishment of, of beliefs, which rests upon perfectly undoubted observation and upon mathematical, as is, that is, upon diagrammatical or iconic thought. So mathematical thought was for him uh, diagrammatic. Uh, sorry, but are we okay now? Yes. I go now to the uh, notion of diagram, and it could be related to his semiotic um, achievement, to his semiotic contribution, to his contribution to, um, to the theory of science. Uh, we know that he uh, conceived um, that um, the notion of science was related to the process of semiosis that Im implied uh, three elements, as we know, the, the sign properly said, the, the object, the sign object, the designate and the interpretation. And uh, it was through this that uh, something can be uh, understand as uh, understood as uh, a sign. We have uh, a sign if uh, we have something is a sign is if it is the sign object in the uh, semiotic process. Well, uh, Peirce um, have many classifications of uh, of signs. Uh, when he said that um, logic was the or reasoning was the dramatic, uh, he was saying that uh, uh, logic or reasoning was iconic because a diagram is an icon of a set of rationally related objects. And we go to the next, uh, please, Bruno. If we can go to the next slide, thank you. We have this uh, important basic classification of signs in pairs between icon, index, and symbol. Uh, icons can be uh, an example of icons would be, uh, and we can see what general was the idea of icon by him, 
the idea of an um, basically we can understand an icon as a sign in which the structure or which um, whose structure is very important in order to understand the uh, designate what designate this um, uh, design that that is in the icon. Uh, what is uh, it is and it's at the stake? What is it's really important? What is really important in the structure? It is structure. It is structure. It what it really has, uh, um, um, so to say, a designating function. And we can hear typical diagrams, for instance, uh, uh, diagrams of the sideways system of a city, geometric figures in the sense of the classic uh, uh, Euclidean geometry, and also equations. Equations, algebraic equations, were for him also icons. Why? Because they had a structure. And through, by means of this structure, is that the, the, this icon or this, this equation would have a meaning. In the meaning, it's is important the structure that it has. Okay, uh, we can go on with the next slide, please, Bruno. Thank you. Uh, then we can see that uh, his conception of mathematical logic is based on his semiotic um, ideas. And uh, what that means that um, for him, icons as were characterized in this in his study of science in his semiotics, icons uh, are especially recursive for reasoning. And again, diagrammatic reasoning is any form of valid necessary reasoning. We can uh, understand this idea, what uh, really an icon is in this context, with the following slide, please, Bruno. If we can go to the following slide. Yes, thank you. We can talk in this context, in the context of uh, diagrammatic logic, um, that we can see that uh, in this um, diagrammatic logic, what um, is very important is some kind of operational iconicity. So the operational character of, of feature of, um, of icon. In the what sense? In that uh, icon is uh, a sign that has, an, has an, a certain structure, and we can uh, decompose it, analyze it, and recompose again and have another icon. So this idea to uh, to play with an structure is, is, is essential for, for icons in, in this con uh, mathematical and logical context. And for instance, he said, um, well, um, an icon is a sign for which information may be there derived and in what way information is derived uh, from an icon by means of its analysis of the decomposition and again perhaps composition of, 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 of its part in again in, in a new uh, in a new uh, icon uh, so in the second quotation um, that by uh, by direct direct observation of it, other truths uh, truths um, truth concerning the object can be discovered than those which reside to the mind in construction. So, so to say, um, we construct the um, the icon, and then by analyze it, analyze some set or sequence of icons and combine them we can discover, so to say, other truths. Um, and it is important, and we go to the next 
the next uh, slide, if it's possible. That means when we decompose, when we analyze, and we combine again, uh, we can make what he um, with first uh, refers as experiments in the conic sign. Uh, making hypotheses in the icon, in the icon uh, adding new hypotheses uh, in order to see what can be followed from this hypothesis uh, together with the uh, given icons and manipulating the elements of the iconic things, sign are what he called experiments. It's very important also this idea, this methodological, um, and it is a very nice uh, quotation, um, Deduction consists, it's again the same uh, uh, equation that we, we uh, the same text we saw already, we already saw, but I want to stress it, uh, the following thing. Deduction consists in constructing an icon or diagram, the relation of whose parts shall present a complete analogy with those of the parts of the object of reasoning, that's not so important in this in this case, this, this uh, feature, but in constructing, again, consists in constructing an icon or, or diagram of experimenting upon this image in the imagination and observing the result so as to discover and notice and hidden relations among the parts. That's, uh, now it is very clear what, what he means, what this um, iconic presentation of, 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 of reasoning, the process of reasoning. Um, well, um, there is many problems concerning um, iconicity. Uh, the idea of resemblance uh, is traditionally a very important idea. And uh, so to say now, I know um, I would like to avoid some um, discussion now concerning the, the <clears throat> The notion of iconics, but I would like to uh, stress this operational aspect of, of, of icons. That is the, the important, uh, what really matters here. Um, well, and um, it would be important to, to um, the idea of resemblance is should be some kind of a structural resemblance. Okay, um, now, um, this idea of iconicity is very important in, in his uh, logic. And in, if he says, in my algebra and graphs, the, the whole effort has been to dissect the operation of difference into as many steps as possible. And we can go on now to say that the diagrammatic logic of first, the extension graphs, analyze the study of reasoning. And he, uh, an another quotation. So, uh, sorry, I, I was reading the, the for the previous slide, Bruno. No, no, Bruno. Okay, thank you. The enable us to separate reasoning into smallest steps so that each one may be examined by itself. Okay, I go uh, now to the uh, following part of my talk concerning uh, diagrammatic reasoning and the existential graphs. I go uh, on now with the existential graphs and give me the next uh, slide. Well, um, well, we can go on with this uh, um, invocation of uh, you to, to Perth. Come on, my reader, and let us construct a diagram to illustrate the general course of thought. The next one, please. Oh. 
Well, uh, we have some uh, basic features of residential crafts to understand it then. Um, as I said, we can understand uh, this extension graph in the standard way, the standard way, I repeat, as first order logic with identity. Uh, I will um, um, go into the details later uh, concerning this uh, equivalence. Well, if we have a system of signs, uh, for representing the logic structure of sentence argument, and we have a deductive systems with rules of inference, what he um, called illative rules for proving the conclusion of an argument from given premises. And that is an important, very important point. Existential graphs are a proof system, not a, a system for decision, a purely mechanic system. We can to construct graphs, proofs, uh, in, um, and we have some, uh, we can compare it to some extent with natural deduction by Gensen. Um, well, we can go on with, um, with the next slide in which we uh, show the only we want to uh, present the three systems uh, considered by um, by um, Perth himself that mean that involves three stage of logical complexity: the system alpha, the system beta, the system gamma. Uh, alpha would be propositional logic, so connect the logic of connect. Beta uh, would be the logic of quantifiers and identity. That's very important. I, I, this is the, the main uh, the main point of my talk. Um, I will see how identification and identity are related. Um, beta uh, gives gives uh, all the system for quantifying and identity, predicate logic with identity, uh, and we cannot have um, we cannot um, uh, cut or, or separate quantifiers and identity. Have to separate the two notions. Um, again, I repeat, beta would be equivalent to this note in the in the slide, would be equivalent to classical first order logic with identity. Uh, that was shown by um, Seaman in, in 1964, by John Seaman in, in the book in uh, 1964, I, and also later by in a very nice book on existential graphs due to uh, Don Roberts in 1973. They, both of them, present what I would call the standard presentation of, of the existential graphs. And in this sense, uh, when we consider the standard presentation, there is no doubt that um, beta is equivalent to classical first order logic. Okay, uh, we go on with the main ideas to understand. I go to the to the general idea of the residential graph. We have a sheet of assertion, so um, so to say, a blank uh, um, blank um, sheet. Where uh, so uh, boy sheet where, where in which we can write, we can inscribe, we can, we can make inscription, and the sheet of assertion would be uh, or would represent all the facts, all the facts of reality, all the states of affairs, so to say. Well, uh, so we have all the words, so to say, in this set of sections. And we can, so to say, we can write it down. In, and this uh, writing down, this uh, noting, or this uh, inscribing um, something on the uh, sheet of assertion is to make an assertion. Uh, for instance, we can, we can write in the Latin uh, Latin writing of the English, and uh, we can write this can is on the mat. Or we can write in mathematics or in algebra, uh, we can write 5 plus uh, 7 equal 12. 
and we have in we, we have when we see when we visualize and we and of course understand the 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 notation in in which is this inscribed we can the sentences that we write in the sheet of assignment so there are these two sentences, in this case, uh, written in the seat of assertion. Now, we can go on. We have, in general, in the following slide, we have the, uh, the assertion of A. Very easy. A in the sense of an schematic letter, or uh, we could understand now as a schematic letter, or, what, what, or directly a proposition. Um, and uh, the assertion we can do, uh, that is a very important aspect as a bidimensional annotation. We have the assertion of A, and we have a certain difference uh, sentences. And we can understand in this, um, uh, unfortunately, I cannot point out, in, in, uh, especially in the here in the slide, but uh, I don't know it, it. No, my cursor, my no, no, it's not seen. But anyway, we can see uh, the assertion of different um, um, different sentences, and uh, we can understand um, in every combination. So we have no problem with the order or linearity. We have a bidimensional notation. And we can understand what is in the second uh, sheet of the assertion as the assertion of A, B, C, and D, or A, C, B, and D, or D, C, B, and A, and so on, in, uh, in every order. There is no problem of order. This is very important also. We have a bidimensional notation without order. That's very nice in order to, to express uh, Logical, uh, logical facts. Assertion. We go now to the alpha, to the system alpha, and uh, well, in the system alpha we have the essential. Well, I go on with the standard the presentation um, because it's not the, the the aim of my talk to go on in the system alpha in this in this case. And we can understand that um, the final presentation by um, by Peirce was uh, or used um, a basic sign, a basic graph for system alpha for the connectives, what, what we would call the connective, uh, and he called this basic uh, graph or sign the cat. The cat is the uh, basic uh, notion in the sheet and is a cat in the sense that we cut the sheet of assertion. If the sheet of assertion is uh, represent uh, the set of the, the collection of every fact, we can understand the cat in the sheet of assertion and going out from this universe of facts, and it will be the negation, or what we commonly understand negation. We can go on with the, uh, with the next examples in the following slides. But in where I here, uh, we have uh, not A, not A, in, in representing the first, the second on on uh, on the left uh, would be the negation, and that's very important. There is no sign. There is no um, uh, in the system. No sign from conjunction is needed. So, the uh, merely the um, the inscription of the two sentences in in the sheet of assertion or in within the cat depends, um, could be understood as a conjunction. Uh, going back to the previous uh, slide, we 
should also know that we have uh, not not uh, as two um, two cats, one within the other. Cats do not cross. That's very important. It cannot so easy can cannot be crossed. And uh, by the way, it would be an endopoetical, uh, as he said, an analytical meaning that we go inside, from outside, from inside, in the sense we understand note, note, A. And we can go to the uh, next, uh, and we can now, now in the final presentation, he uh, first decided to present the um, conditional. So understood as uh, uh, note is it is not the case and that A and not B. Uh, we can discuss this fact, um, but um, what really uh, why he decided to do it? But again, that is the basic uh, notion of alpha graphs. Everything concerning. Uh, propositional logic is uh, done, is presented by means of cats. Well, we go on, and I go to the uh, uh, central, the, the, the nucleus of my talk, with the system beta and lines of identity. Well, quantifiers and identity. The line of identity. He expressed the following fact in his uh, graphs. He inscribed, as he said, he inscribed a line, a line, a heavy line, he said, um, in the sheet of assertion, and this could be the line of the entity. Is, as I and it is in this quotation heavy line so uh, would be a fat line with two ends and without other topical singularity at a point of branching or a node not in contact with any other sign except at its extremity so we can Put in its extremities, we can. Uh, it can be another science, another graphs. Okay, there is no problem. Um, and there is a very important fact: the line of the entity cannot branch. Next, uh, please. Next slide. Um, in a fast way, uh, in a very quick, quickly and very in, in a very brief form, uh, I, I talk about predicates. Predicates would be understood as a spot. So uh, only as a spot in the seat of assertion. Uh, and a spot is generally every, uh, every sign that does not, uh, that not matter related to uh, logical structure. For instance, there in this, this example, is on the mat, um, would be in a spot. What does it mean? Only in a spot. It, it is that uh, we, we see only a, a spot or, or something very uh, impres uh, imprecise or, or indeterminate. In this case, because it's on the mat, has a structure, but not a logical structure, has a structure in other sense. And when we, uh, that is the, the first approach. The first approach, <clears throat> lines and the of identity shows or express existential quantifier. When we see the, um, the lines of identity, we, we said that we say that something is on the mat, something happens, something, um, uh, and we add to it a spot, it, is, uh, it means that uh, there is something 
there is at least one one thing in the domain of the curves that um, or from which uh, which is predicate what is in the spot. So we see. Um, now, if we go to um, go on with the line of identity, we have in this case two extremities, and we see on the on the one side cut on cut on the other side on the mat. There are two different spots, and we join them by means of the line of identity. And it is said here that some cut is on the mat, or uh, equivalently, there is a cut on the mat. There is a cut, there is something that is a cut and is on the mat. Okay, that is the, the, the standard presentation. And we go, well, okay, another uh, more abstract presentation with um, uh, with letters, with a schematic letter for predicates, some P is Q, and we can go on and, well, we, we should uh, better understand what is uh, the, the structure of this line and uh, what it means. The next, uh, the next uh, slide will show us uh, some problems concerning the dots. And it is related to um, the philosophy of notation. The philosophy of notation uh, that want to uh, construct in fact, we can understand in different ways, and it's not clear, by the way, uh, PERS develop uh, different systems of uh, his, uh, his existential graph. And, um, well, um, he published very little about, about them all these systems. So, uh, and he presented in, in few opportunities only in, in lectures. So, um, many stuff, most of the stuff concerning extension graphs remain in, in the Nachlas, in the um, unpublished papers that are, were uh, conserved or were archived uh, in, the, um, in the library of the uh, the university, the Harvard University. Um, in recent times, these uh, manuscripts were uh, really um, investigated, researched, and um, we discover uh, really what what problems uh, Perth had concerning the, the extension graphs. Perth did not arrive at an ultimate version, an ultimate formulation of his existential graphs. Because of that, he, he was not absolutely convinced by the presentations he, he was developing. And he said in, in, in this time, between uh, the end of 19th century and his death in 1914, he said uh, he wrote different versions and conceptions of this existential graph. Uh, sometimes we have different versions of what a, a line of identity is. Um, <clears throat> and he said that a single dot, uh, here uh, we have the notion of dot, um, or single, uh, a single con congery, so uh, sets or sequence, of uh, dots would be the basis for uh, lines of identity. Um, so a single dot will refer, no, no, I, I would uh, go back to the, thank you, will refer to a single member of the universe, but with no thereby be made to refer determinedly to anyone. And we have here as an idea of existential quantification. It's not a determinate uh, designation of an object, so it, it remains not determinate. <clears throat> a dot merely asserts that some individual object exists. In this sense, a line of identity is only the fact that we stretch the dots. It's only that. 
So we stretch it and, and we uh, join different spots uh, through the lines of identity. So a line of identity could be made on the basis of dots. And we can go on with the next uh, slide now. Um, a heavy line, again, a heavy line, can be considered not, uh, in this case, in this quotation, we have not a stretching of a dot, uh, but as a, uh, it could be a continuum of contiguous dot, a continuum. That's very important, this idea of continuum in Peirce sense, uh, in Peirce's uh, conception of, of uh, the continuum, uh, of uh, infinity that uh, is uh, underlying or is under his ideas of, uh, concerning uh, the lines of identity. Uh, and contiguous dot denote a single individual. <clears throat> so such a line without any point of branching, again, it cannot branch, will signify the identity of individuals denoted I, it's a string. Okay, here have in this quotation how the notion of identity uh, suddenly come up from 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 the line of uh, from the line of identity, and because of that we talk about lines of identity. The uh, the individuals um, indicated in its extremities would be. Uh, equal, so to say. Uh, okay, we can go on. And we have now, we can, uh, how would be a single line of identity uh, inscribed in the uh, sheet of assertion? What would be the meaning of this um, design? And we can understand now in our current, uh, the standard, our current and the standard notation uh, for predicate logic, linear notation, we, we have also an order. Uh, we can understand in this way. This only line on the uh, identity written on, uh, on the, um, on the sheet of attention should mean that there is an X, there is an Y, X equal Y, or X identity to Y. So we have in only one sign, both notions, as we understand uh, uh, separated in the uh, current uh, or traditional uh, notation, logical notation. Um, well, now we can understand what really says something. We have two spots and we uh, join them by a line of identity. The full meaning of the line of identity would be as follows, um, interpreted in the current uh, notation. So we have that uh, two quantifiers, in fact, uh, because we can understand that uh, two quantifiers, in, in so to say, in the extremities of of, of this um, of this line line of identity or inside the line of, of identity, and um, we say at the same time that the uh, variable, so to say, from the uh, quantifies refers to the same object. So there is an X, there is a Y, PX and QY, uh, and X equal or identical to Y. Okay, that is the, the, the would be the, the, the uh, standard rendering of this expression. Okay. But we uh, should, uh, no, no, uh, I would go, uh, please, Bruno, back. Thank you, thank you. Um, it is interesting to notice that uh, we have uh, a more complex 
presentation uh, in in current in the traditional uh, expression of of this in the current in the current notation. Um, well, we can go on with the next slide, and we we should so, uh, show another. Um, it's important to notice that, of course, he with the cat and the uh, and the line of identity, he uh, could construct the uh, universal quantifier. Uh, in the traditional sense, he was uh, first was followed. Uh, the classical interpretation of of, uh, of logic, so it was absolutely classical logic, and in the sense that an uh, universal quantifier in, understood as a negation of an existential uh, quantifier that negates the predicate, and we can see that the um, the line of identity cross the cats. That's a very important point that, uh, well, we will have some problems about it. The crossing of cats, um, and it, it's a very important thing related to the manipulation of this, uh, this uh, idea, these this, this, uh, times, these graphs. OK, we go on. And we have now what would be uh, to say that there are two distinct things, at least two distinct things. So there is two things that are not identical. So is uh, a cut that is crossed by a line of identity. And we can see how uh, we can construct different um, expressions, uh, different sentences, how can be written, uh, how be noticed in the uh, inscribed in the um, system of uh, of beta, in the beta system. Well, now of course, in and, and in the next uh, slide we will see the Bruno. Please the next slide. Thank you, thank you. We have here the different operations, actions that we can do with the graphs. We can scribe them, we can erase them, we can extend them, we can extend lines of identity, we can retract lines of identity, we can join lines of identity, or we can cut line of identity. That is the things we can do, and we should order this, uh, this possibility in order to have a logical uh, truth or to, uh, in order to see that from a certain premises, we can obtain uh, a certain conclusion. So to make the process, to, 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 to show and to construct the process that follows uh, from a valid, from a valid deduction uh, from premises to conclusion. Uh, we have here um, what would be the principle of identity uh, in the sense that it said that uh, every x x equal x, and we have we have clearly um, um, if uh, it would be interesting to have um, it would be interesting in fact to have to present this in a movie. It is too bad that we have only slides. And uh, it would be nice to have some kind of, uh, of movie or a cartoon, so to say, in order to show how, how it's constructed. Um, well, we, we can see that we have, a, a, we have many things here, uh, and we can reflect upon uh, this inscription or this form to describe the principle of identity. So, if we see carefully, we have um, two cats in the sense of universal, uh, of uh, conditional, uh, express also an universal quantifier. We can see that in some sense, 
we have an uh, a conditional sentence and this in in this sense that we have no an existential commitment for instance uh, we have also that um, the line of identity is closed we have something like a, a circle and uh, Originally, we can we can say, and it's different to say without a, a blackboard or a whiteboard, in order to to present it more accurately, the process how we construct the line of identity in this uh, in this example. We initially we begin to inscribe, so to say, a line of identity uh, in in the um, in the uh, left side of the um, of the uh, inner, we, we have an inner and an outer cut. In the uh, we have in the outer cut, we have uh, on the left. We could think that we begin to inscribe a line of identity, and we close it after. Um, crossing the inner cut. So we have many things. We begin in, in the left side and we go to, to the right side in order to have really something like would be a conditional. So we, we said, um, and to also to have a universal quantifier. We see how many things are um, or result from the analysis of this sentence. And of course, we should say that uh, how to construct it as a uh, valid uh, logical law, so to say, um, um, so to say that all examples could be logical truth in the normal sense. Um, we can go on see in in the second line uh, the second traditional law of um, of identity concerning identity that is the principle of substitution again uh, here is more clear that we have uh, conditionals and we begin by, by by saying if we see the outer the uh, outer um, or the external uh, um, cut. When we begin with the, uh, by inscribing a line of entity, we go on crossing uh, the uh, ulterior or the or the other cuts, the inner cuts, and we say in in the uh, internal cut. In the outer cut, sorry, in the outer cut, we said that x equal a, and then we have some uh, hypothesis or some, so to say, some that um, uh, would be the the ante antecedent of the conditional, and how it is related this uh, identity to the two. Um, uh, predicates. Uh, it could be nice uh, uh, again. It is too bad that we don't have the possibility to use some kind of uh, a movie or to write it down in a whiteboard in order to see how this is constructed. Okay, uh, we can go on and uh, we can go. Uh, to the directly to the consequence, some consequence to to to, to start to 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 uh, give some consequence of of the previous position of what we already said. We have two kinds of lines in all the system of residential graph, and in some sense, lines are basic logical signs. So, uh, logical signs. Uh, in the extension graphs are lines. The lines of um, the cut or 
<clears throat> he also called it line of separation, uh, seps, because of separation, close and line. Um, and um, the lines of identity, the heavy lines. Okay. Um, we have these two uh, basic uh, lines, and I want to, uh, and we have all the system, that is what, all we need. Um, so the two lines and the spots. We go, we go now to the um, next and final part of my talk. I would like to um, to go to the idea of analysis, and it will be uh, the philosophical uh, consequence of the philosophical uh, discussion or reflection in in the talk, and related to the to uh, what can be said again, um, philosophy notation by. <clears throat> by Peirce, and the analytical nature of the extension graphs. Well, the system of extension graphs, as he said in a manuscript, provides the only method by which all connection of relatives can be expressed by a single signs. Of relative uh, should be understood uh, in this sense, in the sense of uh, predicates. Uh, relatives could be special uh, um, predicates, and relations, uh, relational predicates. Um, the system of existential graph recognize but one mode of combination of the idea. So um, the idea is that the line of identity is a soul sign that cannot be decomposed. And this is shown by the actions performed in constructive design. So I, I would like to say uh, more about it, but it is the idea of analysis as uh, uniqueness of the composition that is here in discussion or is, uh, or is shown. I'll go now, uh, as uh, Bruno puts in the, in the slide, to um, further comments uh, and discussion of the subject. Um, well, we have we have some results, or we can see from the disposition the following things. The extension graphs have analytical function. The line of identity is an analysis of identity and existential quantification. Um, we have only one sign, as I said, um, and we have, by the way. We have the uh, multiple reliability of, of, the, of this combination of, of, of the signs uh, in different senses. Uh, the beta system is for sort of logical identity. Um, and the beta graphs, the system beta, um, presents identity in a system without individual variables. So we can discuss now. Uh, or relate this fact with the uh, with the fact that um, Peirce was not thinking in a special domain of quantification. We should understood. We should uh, notice that uh, the sheet of assertion is the universe of, of uh, state of affairs or facts, not of object. It is not the domain. And where is the domain? There is not really uh, a domain uh, presupposed in this uh, in this case. So an explicit domain of quantification, and we in in this sense we um, we see we notice some um, so to say uh, some deviant deviant uh, conception from traditional uh, conception of logic in first order logic. So, um, yes, go on, and we can see another problem. We, uh, we go now to some problems that have the different versions that we can uh, find in, in the different manuscripts by Peirce. 
We have also in, in this uh, complex uh, presentation and the development of, um, of uh, PERS existential graphs, uh, PERS also con conceived what he called valental graphs related to relatives. So to, so to say to relations or to um, uh, relational predicates. And he developed uh, before the um, before the um, previously to the previous to the, the development of the essential graphs, he uh, constructs some ideas concerning the, how to express um, relations and how to join different uh, relative predicates. And he called, because of that, with a chemical uh, metaphor, valenta graphs. And we have the RDT is uh, represented by <clears throat> what he, he called cooks, as a kind of chem chemical bonding. Well, I um, if we go to the next um, to the next slide, we see some problems concerning the uh, yes the adequate or or accurate uh, writing the accurate notation of hooks because we can join hooks if we join hooks and we can go to the next uh, to the next one to the next slide if we see it at two join hooks what we have is a line of identity. So there is some problems in different manuscripts that um, have been avoided in the standard presentation, for instance, in, in the book of Don Roberts. Um, OK, and it's, in fact, the joining of hooks a line of identity. Well, in fact, from a poorly, so to say, logical uh, sense, they are equivalent. They function as equivalent. When we join two hooks, we obtain a line of identity. And we, if we go back to the um, to the previous, please, Bruno, if we can go up to the previous slide, well, no, to the previous slide, we can see um, the problems of uh, of hooks and, um, and analyze them or consider them as lines of identity. Because lines of identity cannot branch. They cannot branch. And anyway, we have here some join of, of, uh, of hooks. The idea that uh, in this, uh, the idea would be to express something like there is an X that is P and Q and R and S. It will be this, this very simple idea. And we could see if it is uh, accurate represented in, uh, by joining hooks. There is some problems that we have in, in writing, uh, in scribing, and we have to decide. And I think uh, Roberts made the, the, um, a good decision in order to um, retain um, the notion of line of identity as essential and not to uh, include hook, hooks that uh, in, in the, the play in the, the main problems concerning beta graphs. And in this sense, we can make really equivalent beta graphs to pathologic with identity. Uh, well, and well, we can uh, go on in the discussion. Uh, Bruno, please, the, the, next, uh, the next one. We can, uh, please, the, the, the following. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot um, for this. No, 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 uh, sorry, uh, Bruno, in the previous, in the, because there is additional material that we can uh, add to uh, in this which is number? Uh, okay, only the 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 
I would like to express my gratitude in the last um, slide, please. Thank you, thank you, muito obrigado uh, a vocês, and thank you everyone, gracias a todos. Uh, and uh, don't forget, maybe the face mask not become a gag, please. But the face mask is in, in the logo of this series of, um, of conference. Well, thank you, thanks a lot. And Thank you very can, much, uh, yeah. begin the discussion and questions, and, and I would like to this uh, work already work in progress. I have uh, some uh, ideas, but uh, I have also some problems and, and, and doubts in, in this in, in, at last. Thank you very much, Javier. So now I have some time for questions or comments. So, uh, as usual, I would like just to ask you to manifest it first in the chat to avoid a lot of people talking at the same time. Ivan? Um, okay, f thank you, Bruno, uh, and all people. I don't know if I, I may use English for the question or Spanish. Uh, as we are recording, it will be published, so maybe English is better to have a... Okay, uh, no problem. Audience. Yeah, yeah no, no problem at all. Uh, okay, uh, Javier, uh, I would like to ask you about why uh, you consider that Roberts do uh, a good decision, took a good decision, uh, avoiding hooks and preferring uh, the line of identification. I think that Javier disappeared, yes. Yeah, Javier had problem again. Let's just wait a few seconds and probably he will be back. No problem. Javier is back. <laughs> Ivan, maybe Hello. it would be better if you make your question I, again. Sorry, sorry. Yes, I, yes. I, uh, I was disconnected a few minutes. Um, by the way, by the way, before everything, uh, could you, I, I don't know if you could uh, hear properly the, the, whole, um, the whole talk. Yes, yes, we could hear it. The transmission was okay. Uh, yes. Okay, I, I am very glad to, to know it because it's complicated. There was a question, I think, by yes, uh, I saw the, um, Are you hear me, Javier? Yes, 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 I can hear you, Ivan. Okay. Ivan, nice um, to see you. You too. Um, my question is uh, why do you think that Roberts took a good Choice in preferring the uh, the not branching in the line of identity uh, and yeah. leaving out the the hooks in, in, in the system because it seems to me that hooks ha, uh, have a more relation uh, relational property than the line of identity and maybe uh, it could be better for the ontological and metaphysics, uh, uh, Persian metaphysics. Thank, uh, thank you for your, uh, for your question, because uh, um, underlines very important points in, in, in Peirce's work. Uh, as I said, uh, the whole uh, the whole ideas, whole uh, Perth ideas, um, were developed in, in the philosophical background. 
on, on, on the same purse that um, for instance there is um, I, I had not no possibility of uh, presenting in, in, in an accurate form without ah I can I can write it down in, in the whiteboard. Oh. For instance, uh, we know that. Um, oh, I want to look for a better. Ah. If we have as as. Um, In traditional notation, we uh, if we have this um, I wrote it I write it very um, can you see it? Yes. Can you see the what I, I yes. read what I wrote in the blackboard? Okay. This could be the same as to say Px and uh, well that there is an x that would be equivalent to sorry both are equivalent. There is no problem. In first order logic with identity, of course. Well. Going on, we can write an indeterminate uh, number of um, of quantifiers, and in the, an, an indeterminate corresponding uh, number of identities, and all them we should express the same thing as this. So, what does it mean? That in fact we should have in the line of identity many, so to say, many possible quanti extensive quantifications uh, that are all equivalent to uh, this one. Okay, that is to say something about the philosophical background and the idea of it is related also to the idea of infinity. That in fact uh, we cannot go to the to a basic analysis of the line of identity in terms of, of, of dot, we have some infinity of dots eventually. Or, um, but um, it could be a case of some uh, philosophical problem beside or behind the, uh, the system. But uh, you ask, you ask for uh, or related. To the hooks and the, the hooks uh, plays a role in the Valenta graphs, and he talked also uh, about hooks in the uh, in existential graphs. But we can um, so um, there is some problems at, at, as I show related to the uh, joining hooks or unbranching hooks. But it could be possible, but not with the uh, with the line of the entity. So uh, there is, in fact, this is a problem of consistency. What we have here, Ivan, uh, and, uh, answering your question. Uh, if we want to have some um, some consistent system uh, according to our previous idea. Uh, if we want to have to express, to use, to make a fruitful use of the existential graph in order to express what we now call first order logic, okay, we should um, um, make a choice like uh, Robert's decision. I think it's 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 um, um, it's practical because. Roberts make a certain order organization of the material. We we should keep in mind 
that uh, Peirce did not have a final version of the uh, extension graphs. So we, in some sense, we have to, to, to complete the, the system and to make some decision from our point of view in order, so from our historical situation, so to say, we have the whole history of, of logic behind the, behind us, the whole history of, of, of symbolic logic and the whole idea of first order logic behind us, and to organize it in order to make a fruitful system. They wanted to, for, uh, but uh, does that not means that it does not mean that we have uh, other problems, philosophical problems in, in the background that should be uh, analyzed uh, or studied in order perhaps to, as I, I mentioned, and I suggest that uh, we could understand also um, uh, existential graph perhaps in, in other direction, not in the, um, in the traditional uh, sense of fertile logic with identity, only that. Thank you. Cassiano? Oi, Javier. Cassiano, tudo bom? How are you? Tudo bem? Uma, uh, tudo I bem. have a question for you, which is um, how would you how would you interpret? How would you what would you say about the uh, versus existential graphs from the point of view of meta language as we know it today since you interpret at certain points of your presentation this have this this idea occurred to me and so i would like to know what would you have to say about that that's it yes thank you it's an interesting question also of course um purse like Frege and, and others logicians of the time had not an expressly uh, notion of, of meta language and uh, or, or order. He, he uh, mixed all the, um, he had a mess with all these notions. So to say, from our point of view, um, and he. Um, uh, combine or, or mix different notions like uh, uh, like meta meta linguistic notions and also a uh, question of order. Uh, for instance, it was very and, and a good a very good example would be um, in the in the case of the I, I will relate to the because it's, it's uh, more simple to the case of um, algebraic uh, presentation of logic. So his algebra problem. Here we have the crew thought of the, as we know, um, the presentation of, of uh, basically the, the, the sentences. Oh. I don't know it right now. Okay, okay. That does not matter. The growth foot, so to say, the, the the sign that he devised in order to express the same equations, and he could understand it as um as the implication between sentences and as the relation of logical consequence, as the con material conditional, um, and also as the copula. In this time, in the time of the algebra of logic, he uh, 
uh, use it to express all these, these different notions. Uh, um, well, in the case of, um, I don't know if, 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 if I'm right in or, or, or I'm answering your question, but uh, in the case of credential graphs, for instance, uh, we can, we could understood the expression of the conditional in other way, not only to express uh, conditional, but also uh, implication or illatio, illatio, so to say, the relation between premises, illatio, the relation between premises and conclusion in, in an argument. Okay. Um, in this sense, there is not real difference between metalinguistic uh, talk, or we can interpret interpret um, first systems in in these different ways. In this case, uh, and it's also a, a choice, a decision. We understand it as um, as well, as a language, so to say, as a system of science, uh, and we work with the system of science. He understood clearly, he expressed clearly when he constructed science, that he was doing implicitly metalinguistic expression. The rules as clearly expressed and so on, the rules constructions, the rules of, of, uh, of inference, and all uh, properly, uh, accurately uh, presented. There is no problem with that. And in, in the metalinguistic sense, and as we now understand, he did know uh, talk uh, explicitly about meta language, but uh, he presented it in a clear metalinguistic uh, way. But uh, we have different interpretations, uh, different possible interpretations of would be for the for the science in different contexts. In this presentation. Uh, that I want to uh, stress the um, I wanted to stress the uh, relation with first order logic. I I took it at the system of science. Uh, I took the extension graph uh, simply as a system of science. Uh, another um, another point. Another point. A very important point. Identity. Um, when we uh, read his uh, algebra papers on, on algebra logic, he was always thinking in identity as a relation between different kinds of objects, eventually also propositions or objects and so on. Uh, so we have a different presentation of identity, not, not, not as a patient, as an equational sign, like in, in, in algebra, but a real identity relation. So, and it, he expressed explicitly that he was thinking um, as, uh, as um, he was thinking of identity as uh, a relation within, uh, within objects. So, a relative predicate, a relative. What's a kind of relative in this, in the extension graph? So, in, not to say in the extension graph, but in the origin of extension graphs. There is perhaps more to say. There are very interesting problems in our, in, when we construct. Um, when we begin to understand uh, identity proposition, but uh, it could take uh, more time. Okay, thank you. I don't know if I answer your question. question? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. It is. We have time. any other question or comments? So, thank you very much again, Javier. Oh, we have a question from Martin Book. Martin, you may talk. Uh, yes, uh, my question is, if it is possible to, 
to represent a probabilistic reasoning uh, with the graphs. Because mm, it's said a very general time. question. Uh, really, um, well, we have um, th these three systems. Um, alpha, beta, and gamma. Gamma was for modal, uh, was modal logic. What, um, that is what um, PERS achieved. In, um, in the gamma uh, graphs, he developed many sheets, he considered many sheets of assertion, different sheets of assertion. And in some cases, he used, he used also colors, colors to express, uh, in order to express uh, different modalities. So it, it was the, the, the domain of modality. Probability, I think it's another notion, and it was mm, uh, it was not a, a model notion. Um, uh, anyway, um, by means of what he considered existential graph, there is no evidence of uh, reconstruction of probability we can be quite sure about it. Uh, anyway, it could be possible to express um, by a diagrammatic system uh, uh, inferences concerning probability. But it would be, it would, uh, it would not, not be really existential graphs as, as uh, Perth conceived in it, I think. There is also new, uh, um, at every moment, every time we have new, uh, or we discover new passages, new manuscript for, from Perth where there is some suggestion, side direction, or some, some indication in, in certain direction that would be, for instance, probability. Uh, we don't know really. Uh, perhaps in some manuscript he talked something about. We we should check, and there are many uh, there are many manuscripts to be uh, researched. But in the, in the general presentation that so in the in the in the up to now in in the presentation of um, um, existential graphs we we could not find we we it's not possible to find some interpretation of probability I think. Okay, thank you. Any thank other you question? So, thank you very much, Javier, for the very nice talk. And thank you very much, everybody who attended here. Well, I am very glad to, to, to have 